And here we are at the end of this video series. It's all very sad. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. He's lying. It's, it's the day after Christmas now and I was editing the video and it was an hour and 20 odd minutes long without the two camera bits. So yeah, it's going to get split into three now. It's not the last video. It kind of is still the last video. It's the same content as what the last video would have had. But now it's going to be three. Sorry. <laughs> it's not the last video anymore it's the third to last video and that's because as i said an hour and 20 minutes is a bit too long for a video in my opinion i don't want to sit there for an hour and 20 minutes listening to me you don't want to do that no one does so i've split it into three this bit's going to be on the discs section the it, this is going to be the the mounting discs formatting discs etc the next bit will be tuning and the last bit will be the permissions uh, files and things like that so i'm not going to waste too much time here because they're already going to be pretty long anyway so let's get going so here we are back on the vm same everything nothing's changed from the last one all i've done is add one new disc so i say nothing's changed one one disc has been added it's a 10 gigabyte disc we went settings storage and we added a new disc here that's it Everything else is exactly as it was, exactly the same, nothing's changed. So first we're gonna go through FDisk. FDisk allows us to manage disks, essentially. So does GDisk and so does part of There's three tools available. FDisk was one of the ones that came along for master boot record style disks and GDisk came along for GPT disk. Parted has always been, as far as I am aware, it can do GPT or MBR. FDisk can do GPT or MBR, but GDisk is more suited to GPT, okay? That might seem a little bit confusing. The best thing to do is don't use DOS disks anymore, so the MBR disks, just use GPT. I can't see a reason for using MBR these days. It's very unlikely you'll need to. So Parted or GDisk will do what you need it to. So let's go through, quick run through of FDisk, and then we'll jump onto GDisk and Parted. So if we do FDisk and then hyphen L, we can see all of this output. So I'm not going to get through all of this right now, but what I'm going to do is show you the three disks. So we've got SDA here, which is the first disk, 100 gig. The second disk is SDB, which is also 100 gig. It has four file systems and we created a RAID device out of these. So if I scroll down, we can see those three RAID devices, MD2, MD1, and MD0. And we've also got this other disk here, which is our 10 gigabyte disk, for slash dev, for slash SDC. And we can get into that with FDisk using FDisk. And then we port for slash dev, for slash SDC. And we can see we're in that now. We've got a new sort of prompt here. We can type M for help for more information. These are all the commands that will work. We can do things that are specific to DOS disks and more, but we're not gonna do that. What we can do is do P just to print it out. There's no file systems and it gives you some information on the disk itself. So to create a new partition, we just do N, press enter. It'll ask you if it wants to be primary or extended. Go back into one of the original videos to learn more about that, but essentially you can have four primary and many extended. We want it to be primary. We could type P, but it already defaults that, so we can just press enter. Next, we're gonna look at the partition number. Again, you can only have four, so it's one to four. It defaults to one, so I'm just gonna press enter. The first sector is where you want this partition to start on disk. I want it to start right at the beginning of available space. Now, I won't get into the reasons why it starts at 2048. Again, go all the way back to the, the very first um, or second video that I did in this series, and you'll learn about that, okay? But in this case, it will start at 2048. So I'm gonna press enter and it's asking me where I want the last sector to be. Now I could type a number in if I knew how to calculate the sectors exactly, but I, personally, I don't know anyone who does. So what I'm actually gonna do is say I want it to be in gigabytes or megabytes because that is also an option here. Now, if I just press enter, it will fill the disk because it's the last available sector here, but I want it to be plus five gigabytes in size, this partition. So I'm gonna press enter. Now it's created a new partition, one of type Linux and size of five gig. What it means by type Linux is if I press P and press enter, we can see we've got this type of Linux. This is just something Linux can use. You can format it as ext4, ext2, etc., etc. But if I wanted to change that type, then I'd put T and then press enter. And now it's gonna ask me to list all the codes. So I do L and here we go. So I've pressed T and it's saying that this one partition available will automatically edit that. If there was more than one partition, you'd be able to select that partition and then change the format. But you can see here, there's a number of different ones and they're all hex codes. So hex goes from zero to nine and then instead of going to 10 it goes a b c d e f 
okay? So you've got 0 to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, okay, so you see how that kind of works there. Uh, it goes up to F and then it starts again, 1, 0, 1, 1, all the way down to 1, 9, and then eventually goes to uh, 1, A, 1, B, 1, C. But you can see there's some stuff missing here. They're not, they're not every single hex value is there. There'll be reasons behind that. I don't know what those reasons are personally, but these are hex values you type in. So if you wanted to, this to be an LVM formatted disk, you do it as an AT. If you wanted it to be, I don't know, say swap partition, then there will be one in here somewhere for that. There you go, 82 Linux swap. Um, oh, it's actually 82, not 82. In our case, we want it to be Linux. We want it to be formatted as EXD4 and things like that. So it's just 83, okay? We don't need to change that, so that's good. So it's it said the partition type is Linux. Now, me doing all of this has changed nothing on the disk, okay? Absolutely nothing whatsoever. This is just all ready to be written to the disk. So that's the good thing about S, F disk and G disk. They don't make changes until I type W and then press enter. Okay, if I didn't want to make those changes, I could just press Q, press enter, and nothing would happen to the disk. I'd lose no data, nothing would be changed, nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, parted is a lot more brutal than that. As soon as you type something and press enter, it does it. There's no going back or anything like that. Okay, I do want to write this, so I'm going to do that. Now, if I do my hyphen L command again, the F disk hyphen L, we can see that SDC now has a file system. You can also target a specific disk. For example, if I do SDC like this, um, let's clear the screen so you can see it a bit better. It just prints out that one disk. So there is that as well. So I've got this five gigabyte disk. Um, it has a type of Linux and we can now format that disk. To format that disk, it's pretty simple. We just do make FS, MKFS. Now we can pass types into that and things like that, but we don't need to, because if we just do dot, have a couple of times we can see we've got all these options for file systems now i want mine to be ext4 so i'm going to do that i'm going to do dev slash sdc and then the partition number because if we look now we don't just have sdc we have sdc1 which is the partition so i'm going to format that partition it was really quick because it's five gigabytes obviously uh, large partitions would take much longer and there we have it we have a file system now that's usable we can start mounting this disk and write to it and do more with it. I'll get into mounting in a few minutes, but for now we can see that we have a file system. So next we'll go over to GDisk. GDisk is essentially the same as the um, the FDisk command, but it's been made to work better essentially with GPT than FDisk does. There is some limitations around FDisk. I think it's down to the, fa the file system size or something like that that becomes a problem. So we're gonna do GDisk dev SDC, and we'll see here it says found invalid GPT and valid MBR convert mbd to gpt format in memory well it's converting it in memory this operation is potentially destructive exit by typing q if you don't want to convert your mbr partitions to gpt format so straight away it's going hang on a sec yeah i want to work with gpt disks and this is an mbr so if i just write that out it's already going to try and convert this to a gpt file system okay so if i now list the contents of that using hyphen l same thing we can see it's converted it to a gpt disk somewhere here using gpt so found valid GPT with protective MBR using GPT. Okay, the, fa the partition's still there, but it's now a GPT disk. You can see the code's changed. You can see before it was 83, now it's 8300. So let's go into GDisk a little bit further. So I'm gonna go into that. We'll delete the partition that's on there by using D and then enter. So it automatically deleted partition one because that's all that was there. So if I print it out using P, same rule, we can do a question mark for help. And we can say, uh, let's have a look. We can change the partition's name, delete one. We can add a new partition with N in the same way. We can create a new empty GYD partition table. I'm going to do that just to make sure that everything's cleared and we're definitely with the GPT disk. And yeah, here we go. So new disk. Partition number is now 1 to 128 instead of 1 to 4 because there's no primary or extended partitions in GPT. The default is one, so I'll just press enter. Now the first sector is 2048, but we can actually start it at 34. You can see the, the number has changed, but we're gonna default it to 2048 just for the sake of this tutorial. And the last one again is the same as before, it will fill the disk. Or alternatively, I can do the same, plus five gig. And it's saying the current type is 8300, which is the Linux file system, which is what we had on the MBR disk. We can use L to look at the codes. So here we can search for a string or we can enter to show all now here there is a heck of a lot more okay so if i just press enter again and enter again and enter again you can see there's there's so much more in terms of the types we can use so it's worth having a look through if you need something different so things like chrome os is in here android's in here 
there's, there's quite a bit. We don't need any of that though. We just want to keep 8300. So I'm just going to press enter. Okay. And that'll keep it as Linux file system. So if I press P now to print out that, that formatting, essentially, not formatting, sorry, the, the partition types and everything, we can see the start, the sector, the number of the partition, the size, the code, and the type. So we could rename this if we wanted to. That, that would be an option. We could say this is our media disk or something like that, or media partition. But I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to write it out. Same rule applies as does with F disk. If I do Q and press Enter, it will go all the way back to where it was when I started G disk basically when I stuck jumps into the GDIS program. So it's worth noting that you can do a lot of changes here. I could do all sorts of different things and then just quit out and it would revert to what it was. So if we go back into there, you can see now it's gone back to that protective partition. You, it's It looks the same because I, I'd already changed it. But for example, let's just do that actually. So I'm gonna do new. Um, we'll just do new, everything is the same. We'll write that out. Yep. And now we'll come back in. I'll print that out. We'll see a 10 gig disk partition here. I'm going to delete that, create a new one. We'll make it 5 gig in size this time. Okay. We'll leave that as it is, print that out, and you can see now I've got this 5 gigabyte partition. But if I think I've done something wrong, I can just press Q, enter, and then if I go back in again, print it out, we're back to 10 gig. See what I mean? So nothing actually gets written unless you write it. Okay. So that's, that's G-Disk in a nutshell. Again, same rule applies. If you want to then make a file system on it that you can then start writing data to, use it make fs mkfs.ext4 in this case i'm going to use and the partition in the same way so dev sdc1 press enter it will say this already creates an ext4 file system because i've rolled back to what it was before but we'll ignore that for now and i'm just going to type yes and there we have it we have something we can now mount again so mounting discs let's have a look at that if I do lsmnt, we'll have this test directory. So this is just a directory on our root file system at the moment. Now, if I mount a disk to this location, it no longer is part of the root file system. Any data I write into that directory will now exist on the disk that I've mounted there. So case in point, I'm going to do touch, uh, mount, test, and then this file. Okay. If I list that, you can see this file there. If I now go ahead and mount dev sdc1 using the mount command, onto mnt test and then list the contents again what do you think is going to be there nothing just this lost and found directory now this lost and found directory if things get corrupted in the inodes and other areas of the disk then they'll be dumped into there however in my experience if something gets dumped into lost and found you've pretty much lost it whether it's found or not just be wary of that the main point i'm making here though is this test file has now disappeared it's not there it's gone look like, yeah, we literally just listed that out and it was there. And now I've mounted this disk into this directory or to that mount point and it's now gone. So now if I touch a new file, this file two, and list that, there's that file. Let's go ahead and unmount that disk. Okay. So we'll U mount MNT test. So you don't unmount the dev SDC one, you unmount the directory, if you like, or the mount point. And I'm going to press enter. Now, if I list the contents of this directory, what do you think is going to be there? Is it going to be this file too, or this file, or nothing? It's this file. So it doesn't delete the contents of that di directory. It just, it, it says, well, well, you've mounted this disk to this mount point or directory. So that's what you will now see there. Once you've unmounted that disk, the original contents will be there. They never get deleted. They're just basically hidden from visibility. So where's this file too gone? Well, it's on that disk, that partition. That's where it lives. Now, if this was a USB stick, for example, I could then unplug that USB stick, go somewhere else, plug it in somewhere else, and that's where the file would be. That's the way you have to look at this. So I could make a new VM. I could move this test disk over to a new VM. And then that file that I just created, a test file too, would be available on that new VM because that's where it's stored. So that's FDisk and GDisk done. We'll take a look at Parted. So Parted, as I say, is it's pretty hardcore. Um, it's really good for automation so because you can do things straight on the command line. Like I could just start typing commands here that I will now show you in Parted. I can show you. So for example, if I type print here, you can see that. If I do Parted dev SDC and type print, I get exactly the same output. Look, okay. So that's why it's good for automation. GDisk and FDisk don't work in this way. So if you're doing stuff during automation and you need to do something to disks, Parted is generally the go-to. But yeah, I'm going to just sit in the Parted command here to show you this. Okay, so I've just shown you the print command. You just type print. We can select another disk inside Parted. This is something you can't do in GDisk or FDisk. You have to come out and go back into the new disk. So if I do FDB, um, oh, sorry, select, spell that right. And we'll do print there. And you can see I'm on a different disk. SDB, 100 gig, and 
these file systems. Now, as I say, it's pretty destructive. Anything I type will happen straight away. So let's make sure we're back on the right disk. And there it is. Now I could do something like print the free space on this disk with print free. So there's no free space in this case. I mean, there's, there's a couple of kilobytes, but nothing usable. I can do things like remove a partition. So I can do RM one. So RM for remove one is the number of the partition. Now if I print that out, it's gone. There's no writing. It's already gone. That's it. It's, it's disappeared. There's, there is no getting that back. Okay. I can switch between DOS and GPT using make label. So MK label and I can do GPT or I can do make label DOS. So it does work with both. So new disk label type. I'm not going to do anything there. I'm just going to cancel out. And yeah, so that's, that's some of the basic commands on kind of viewing things and changing from MS-DOS to GPT and removing the partitions. The main one we need to now know about is creating a partition, right? So what I do is MK part, which is make partition. I want this to be a primary partition in the case of an MS-DOS command, but I'm just going to write this anyway. So we'll do primary and we'll do it as an ext4. So note that we can actually format the partition straight away. We don't have to use makefs with parted. We can just do it straight in here. I can say I want it to start at 2048 and, oh, sorry, my numpad's not working. Let me just 2048. And I want it to end at, I don't know, 409, so it's let's say. Okay. Oh, need an M at the end of there as well. So make partition. It's going to be a primary partition. Don't have to have that in GPT, but just for the sake of showing this command, uh, I want it to be XD4, 2048 is going to start at, and it's going to end at 4096. So I do that, I can print, and we can see we've got that new partition. There it is. The size is two gigabytes or 2048 meg. It's already formatted as the XT4, and its name is primary. The primary is essentially the name. That's what it is. Um, and, and that's it. That's that's making a partition. It's already there. It's created, and it's formatted. We don't need to use MakeFS. I can go and mount that straight away right now. I can also resize the partition directly in parted. So with F disk and G disk, you have to make note of the start and end points delete the partition, create a new partition with the same start point, And then and I'll show you in a minute, actually, this we'll go through the resize part now, and then I'll quickly show you on G disk. Okay. So we can do resize and also you can tab this as well up. So I can do that resize part and I can say, I want resize part to be, I, I don't know. Let's just, let's just do that. We'll do partition one going to end at eight, one, nine, two meg instead. Okay. So now print that out. And we've now got this six gig disk that starts at the two gig point and ends at the eight gig point. Okay. So let's exit out of that. Oh, sorry, quit out of that. That is creating a partition, removing partitions, resizing partitions. So you can see straight away there how powerful it can be. Again, that resize part, I don't need to do resize part and then enter. I can do resize part. Um, I could have done just 2048M and 8192M straight on that command. I could also just do it here. I could do resize part uh, 1, uh, 204. Four... No, sorry, it starts at 204, doesn't it? 4096. Um, do that. It's telling me I'm shrinking the partition. Are you sure? Yes. Now we'll do print again. And, oh, sorry, get rid of that resize part there. And we can see now I have this 2 gig disk again. So you can see there it's really powerful. You can do quite a lot with it. We will go back to GDisk now. Um, in fact, what I'll do first, let's mount the disk. So we'll mount to here dev sdt1 and oh it's a uh, it's got a bad file type did it not format the disk ah re reducing the size has actually deleted the um, partition type so do you know what just for the sake of quickness i'm going to make a fess again and then i'll mount it i'm then going to touch a file there this file too we'll list that file just to make sure it exists which it does and then we'll go into gdisk dev sdc if i wanted to increase the size of this disk uh, partition sorry then I can't just do resize. There is no resize. There's no option to resize anything. You can see here, maybe under recovery and transformations. Let's have a look. There is no resize that I can see there. The, to my knowledge, there is no way of resizing this. Okay. So what you would do instead is this. You'd print out your partition. You'd make a note of your starting sector. You don't really need the ending sector, but it's useful if you've got multiple um, multiple disks, just so you know you're not trying to expand into a, a partition that already exists. Sorry, not multiple disks, multiple partitions. You don't want to expand into a try and expand into a partition that already exists. I don't think it would let you anyway. I've never actually tried, but you need to make note of these things. So number one starts at this. Okay, I want this to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to say delete the partition. Remembering nothing has happened yet. It's just in memory. It's not been written to disk yet. So I want to create a new partition. I want it to be number one because that's what it is here. So I'm going to actually type number one. I want it to start at this sector because that's that's where my original partition started. I want my last sector to be, what do I want it to be? Well, I want this to be an eight gig, no, let's say six gig um, partition. Okay. 
and then I want this to remain as 8300. So that's the other thing you need to take note of. If this changes, you will lose data. Okay, so make sure it's the same number, the same code. Okay, so I'll press enter on that. I could have typed 8300 to be sure, but I read it and I can see it there. If I now print this out, I can see that it starts at the same sector. So if I just scroll up a bit, 3999744. 3999744. The end sector has changed, but that's because I've resized the disk. If I now write that out, we'll do yes. Probably should have unmounted the disk as well first. So um, that, that was a very bad thing to do. So I'm actually going to U-mount the disk. Uh, never, ever, ever resize a partition while the disk mounted. That was my bad. I should have absolutely done that first. Thankfully, what it's actually done is said, the kernel still using the old partition table. The new partition table will be used at next reboot, reboot or after you run these commands, one of these commands. Now, if I ran that command, it would have still warned me and said, nope, the disk is in use. I can't do it. So it's kind of got a protective measure in there saying basically to me that you've been an idiot. You've not unmounted the disk before doing this. So I'm just going to carry on using what was there. So I've unmounted that disk. I will now run part probe and it will just finish with it basically if it doesn't error you know it's worked so that worked now i can remount that disk if i wanted to and that'd be fine uh sorry dev stc one and if i if i now look in there we can see that it's there and now i'm going to check the size of the disk which is really easy i'll just do df hyphen h for human readable for the sake of easy ease of reading should i say and then i'm going to put the path in which is the path it's mounted to the mount point and we can see here huh it's still 1.9 gig. Well, why might that be? If I do F, uh, sorry, G disk L dev SDC, we can see here it's got a six gig disk. So why is this maybe still showing 1.9? Well, that's because we increased the partition size, but we didn't increase the file system size. So to do that, we need to resize the file system. Remember in parted, we did resize parts and we lost the file system. We would have to then recreate the file system. So if you resize the file system to be larger in parted, it will keep the file system in place. You still have to do this command afterwards. So in G disk, obviously F disk, this is the same. So it doesn't matter which one you use to resize the partition, you still have to resize the file system. Okay, so you do resize. 2fs so resize to the file system and then you just do the the device itself so in this case i've got dev sdc1 so if i do that that will now expand my ext4 file system essentially into the space that's available in the partition if i now do this command we can see it's now 5.9 gig or 6 gig give or take okay so that is how we manipulate disks using gdisk parted and other bits and bobs so next we're going to move on to tuning, uh, checking out disk usage and all this sort of good stuff. Okay. So there you go. That's the formatting disks, mounting disks, and generally parted F disk, G disk. We're going to be moving straight into the tuning bit, which is going to be really short. And then the last bit will be the um, permissions bit, which might be a little bit longer because there's quite a bit to go through there. So that was actually where the main chunk of the video was, to be honest. The first bit and the last bit were pretty long and the bit in the middle was really short. So all of these will be uploaded at exactly the same time. So you'll see me wearing the same stuff in the same place, doing the same things. So let's just get into the next one. Mm -hmm.